So, budget tech. It's kind of always been the mainstay of this channel. Since our inception, we've always loved the idea of looking and reviewing and kind of getting hands-on with sort of the lower to mid-range of the phone category. Yes, we love the pro phones and the flagships, but the ones at the mid to lower end are also great because they give you an indication of what most people will buy, as well as a lot of technological innovation happens in the lower end and then is moved to the higher end, which is sick. Now, one of the phones we're reviewing today is this, the Poco C75, a sub $200 smartphone that has some interesting features. Let's talk about those. You get a 5,160 milliamp hour battery, how huge, which charges at a max speed of 18 watts. A 6.8 inch, 120 hertz LCD display, win. On this particular spec, we have eight gig of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage. And weirdly, this looks like a pretty intimidating, crazy, insane camera structure. It's not. It has a 50 megapixel main lens and a two megapixel auxiliary lens. Don't know why, but there you go. But this sub $200 smartphone is powered by a Helio G81 processor. Now the performance of the Helio G81, if we touch on OS straight out of the bat, is reasonably good. Yes, the phone takes a bit of time to kind of warm up and get going as you're setting it up, so that preface that right out the bat. But once it is going, the 120 hertz panel isn't variable. Just gonna put that out there quickly. So you may get some slowdown in applications, but overall the experience is actually pretty good. Navigating around things like websites, checking your emails, just around the phone as a whole, is actually a reasonably good experience when you factor in the price point and that lower end processor. So adding that all in, the experience is reasonably good. And this runs Hyper OS out of the box as well, as mentioned earlier. So you're not getting a stripped out OS version as well. It's actually the full blown version. So you can get the full customization options as you would on other smartphones by the Xiaomi brand. And you can sort of fully customize this to make it your own as well. What I would say one last thing is in terms of OS updates, there isn't any official information, but I would say reasonably, you're probably gonna get a max of three years, more than likely two years of software and security support. So factor that in if you're buying the phone, if you're not bothered about things like software updates, then of course, feel free to go nuts. After the OS, let's talk about gaming. Now, in terms of gaming as a whole, I think most people who buy a phone within this price category probably wouldn't game on their Poco C75, but we thought we'd show you anyway. And gaming as a whole is hit and miss. It runs reasonably well. It looks decent graphically, but what I would say, the latency of input from the touch point of say, in your shooting games or whatever game you're playing is that is you can feel the slowdown in that process. So where you say, if you're touching to shoot someone, you can feel that slow down as well, which is a bit of a shame. But overall, in terms of graphically, how it runs and operates, there's moments of slowdown, I would say, but overall, it's actually reasonably good. Now, one of the things we haven't touched on is the design aspect of the C75, and essentially, you've got a flat plane all across this with your 6.8 inch display at the front. And let's talk about those pretty sizable chins. And oh yes, you do get a power, your fingerprint button is on the side. Now the chin at the bottom is pretty large and then your borders around as a whole are again, not the slimmest. So something like the Honor 200 Lite does a much better job of representing the screen to body ratio than the Poco C75. However, on the rear, you get those cameras. So you get a 50 megapixel main and then a two megapixel auxiliary lens. And let's just say the Poco C75 isn't the most feature rich when it comes to its cameras. The camera performance on the Poco C75, as you could probably imagine, is let's just say five and a half or a six at a stretch out of 10. Also, what I would say that 50 megapixel main lens with that two megapixel auxiliary, when you take a photo in the viewfinder, it doesn't look like that when you have the actual photo in your gallery there's some post-processing happening because when you look at the photo on your screen and you're taking it, it doesn't look great. But then when you get it, it looks a lot better. Don't get me wrong, it's still not great, but it's reasonable. And as a whole, I would say the whole camera overview in terms of the output is reasonable. Photos are of a decent quality, regardless of subject matters, be it environments such as nature or you know just general street photography, they're reasonable. But also what I would say is the time, the shutter time between each one is a bit slow. So whether you're taking a photo immediately, 
it is a bit of a lag. We've taken the focus, but overall the quality is actually decent. It is overly saturated. And what I would say is, well, I'll preface this from the start, this, every photo taken here is with the beauty mode off. By default, they are on the front and rear cameras as standard, which does kind of give you a more of a smoother photo, but I don't think it's as reflective or fair to use those photos as an example of the camera's quality because I think most people don't like the beauty mode being on anyway. There's a bugbear, I don't know why they put that on. You should have that off and then you can add it on if you wanted to. If we move across from photos as a whole to video, again, performance is good. 1080p, 30 FPS on that 30 megapixel on the front, 50 megapixel on the rear supported by that two megapixel auxiliary lens. It's reasonable. It's not gonna blow you away, but I think 1080p, 30 is probably the fair output you would expect from a phone of this price point. I think overall though, I think the camera performance is reasonably good considering the price point. Could it be better? Yes, again, reference the Honor 200 Lite. That is, I think, the benchmark when it comes to the sub $200 or $250, $250 category and below in terms of price, performance, camera, etc., etc. Now the Poco C75, we've touched on a few elements that we think are downsides, but there's a lot more to reflect on. Speaking of those downsides, you have quite a few. Let's touch on those. We've already touched on design as an element of something that is a little bit outdated, which is fair and is fairly represented by the A16 from Samsung as well. Both share very similar design component. However, this is a 4G, not 5G device, which is a bit of a shame in 2024, bit of an odd one that. But moving on from that, you get no IP rating as well. So any contact with water, kaput, sad times. 18 watts of wire charging is its peak output. The main other thing I would say though is that 50 megapixel uh, main camera lens and a two megapixel auxiliary lens kind of doesn't really make sense. And again, touching on design, the, this housing is all a bit unnecessary. It looks a lot more grandiose than it actually is, which is a bit of a shame. I think also in terms of performance in the processor, RAM, etc that's going to be a negative because there are moments when you're using the phone i think setting up and the 120 hertz panel with that processor don't quite align as well as you'd hope and i think those are sort of the main bug pair points i would say with the poco c75 there's a lot to like though there's 120 hertz panel panel massive battery life camera performance is reasonable not great and then you do get hyper os out of the box as well which is Great. And to be fair, I think the Poco C75 probably sits in that category of phone whereby it's for people who are just going to use it for the most basic functions. And for that, it's perfect. For anyone else looking to do so, any serious gaming or get good camera performance or good OS performance or longevity, maybe look at a different Poco device, such like the F6, or maybe look at a device completely different in a different category as a whole. Even I would say, if you're looking for performance, and you're looking for better cameras, look at something like the Honor 200 Lite. Big, big fans of that phone. It is excellent. And you can check out the review in description of that phone. Overall though, I would say for the most basic user, it's good. For anyone who's considering itself a above medium or high-end power user, you probably want to avoid the Poco C75. Thank you so much for watching. Till the next one as always, we out.